Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to day two of uh, Travel Abilities Emerging Markets Summit. And uh, we had a wonderful day yesterday, and uh, we want to continue the dialogue, but it has to come from the stage. So I'm just going to ask you, just so we, we need to just get started. We're running a little late already. One of our presenters uh, tested, uh, was uh, at IPW and tested positive. Uh, ha, w w he was around people who had tested positive for, um, for COVID, so he will not be here today. That's Greg Takahara. So I'm going to continue the presentation, the, the second part of the presentation I made yesterday, so uh, during that period. So anyway, I want to introduce now Sasha Blair Goldenson, who is a, the software engineer uh, at Google and has been instrumental in Google Maps becoming, including accessible features in 55 million cities. So can we play the video, please? July of 2009, I was walking to work on my usual morning walk. I would cut through Central Park to sort of clear my head a little bit, and a giant branch fell from a tree on top of my head. Finally, seven months after the accident, they discharged me from the hospital. It's a brain injury, and that those are really unpredictable. What, what changed was I, I didn't care about the same things as much when I had to come to the office. <laughs> because it wasn't wheelchair accessible. I was like, oh, doesn't anybody know? Like, this is messed up. Wheelchair accessible routing in maps has been something that I've wanted in maps for pretty much my whole lifetime that I've been in a wheelchair, which was, you know, from age two onward. I think it really is useful to learn and to approach individuals who are different from you. The first step is to figure out, let's talk to all, diff all sorts of users and make sure that their experience with my product, with my idea, is good. In, in 2016, there was a hackathon, an accessibility sprint week, and I saw a project that Leo put out there for making Google Maps accessible in terms of route finding. I thought that was such a personally meaningful kind of project and I was so excited to jump on board. What we came to it with was, well, what if we uh, improved maps uh, and improved in particular the, the transit directions within maps by showing which public transit routes are wheelchair accessible. And so that's how that started. And so we built a, a small demo of that within one week long sprint. Yeah, we were a ragtag team of Googlers just united by a common cause. All in all, it took probably more than a year to go from hackathon to actual product in the user's hands. I mean, a lot of the pushback before it, it launched was, well, what if an elevator goes out? What if this, what if that? All totally valid concerns, but always our line was just get it out there and it, it won't be perfect, but it'll be so much better than having nothing at all. And then that's how we'll find out what's working and what's working. The way that transit agencies can provide this data is through a uh, data format called DTMs or general transit specification. Being able to know and figure out, uh, hey, you should avoid this station, this station, 
But the way that is the that's kind of the fight because it gives you that sense of independence and independence. It's just the way you should be built into your Adding those accessibility features is unlocking usability of a huge, huge portion of the region. So, I want to thank you. That accident was a terrible thing to happen to you, but it resulted in 55 million uh, accessible places on Google Maps. So I think we should all give Sasha a huge thing. <clears throat> so, uh, what's new this year? So, since last year, um, in terms of Google Maps, in addition to this great video, uh, sort of updating what's kind of behind the scenes with the developers, what's happened, what else is new on, uh, on Maps this year? Thank you, Jake, uh, so much. But first, I want to say thanks for having me here another year. Thanks to you and Tricia and the small but mighty travelability team and this community you've built and gotten started, and it's just such a pleasure to be here and see all these people here again from so many great organizations and cities, and it's, it's an honor to be among you and to, to represent. As far as what's, what's new this year, I think there are two main things to focus on. One is worldwide availability. That so far, these features have been uh, coming out in region by region, city by city, and the real focus of, of my team this year has been on this should just work everywhere. As, as we all know, people with disabilities, we, we live everywhere, we go everywhere, and just like maps, it should work everywhere, these features, and we want to make sure they work right, so we've been appropriately cautious and testing them bit by bit, so, but really going worldwide. So that's going to be the focus over the next year. Uh, so one is worldwide availability, and the second is, I think I promised the Leave No Trace team, I wouldn't say this, but API. So making it in, in the API, which is a really good multiplier effect so that cities and uh, developers, like we heard about, can build it into their products so that people who use Google Maps, not just on the consumer uh, side, but who make their products and say their DMO pages work well with, with this vast trove of data that the local guys have put together can access it from their programs and so on, on your pages, on your site. So worldwide and API, those are the big focus this year. Uh, after the year. Actually, so I see this as something for the landing page project that we can add the accessibility, the, the, the API right onto the landing page. 
so they would have the transportation and other issues as, as well. So I wanted to ask you about some other disabilities and Google Maps in, in terms of uh, what other disabilities are, are possible. Uh, and, and, and explain, uh, you know, and maybe we should just talk a little bit about the local guide network that you have. I think it was something like 124 million people, is that right? And just the, that's correct, in that That's way. right. And so those are the people that went out and verified. You, so you had some cohort of them that were, that, that volunteered in these cities to go. So can you just sort of... I'd know, be glad to. Yeah. So I don't quite have time for 124 million stories, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, so what's really cool about local guides is these are the, at first, for the first several years of it, I thought, so who, who exactly are these people? I mean, that's a big number. And I felt, to be honest, a little bit guilty. Like, is, is Google Maps, I mean, they're not paid employees. These are people who just contribute the data. Is that OK? And when I finally got to meet a bunch of them, at, we have a, a summit out in California, or we did in the before times, and hopefully will again. They're, these are amazing people. They're always, you, you know, they're, they're diverse. But the point is, these are the people that you want to be sitting next to on the bus, on the airplane that you ask, where's a good place to get a cup of coffee? And they'll say, oh, well, down, downtown there's this park. But also, every Tuesday, there's a farmer's market there. And there's a thing for kids to dance and tell stories. And, and so they're overshares in the best sense. And, they're, and they've, they've made their own little co cohorts within themselves. So there's a, a group of local guys that focus on accessibility, and they have the one accessibility project. And it's truly international. So there's, they're led by people from Nigeria, Sri Lanka, Italy. Yeah. As I say these, I have their faces popping up into my mind, and they're just a great group. So we're going to be able to basically offer these, uh, this type of accessibility all over the world even in, especially in areas where there are no ADA-like uh, regulations. That, that's right. And, and the thing I want to add is they're a great complement to projects like Wheel the World that we just heard from yesterday, which I think does an amazing job of focusing on the specifics of that every disability is different and that they have their 200 data points and they're, they're training these mappers. We need that, too. So. You guys are the experts still, and you will be the experts. But these local guides are sort of like our, these local guides are kind of our, this broad reinforcement core that can be everywhere around the world and have that scale that this group is never going to have and shouldn't have to have. But we will be the experts here, the people in this room. And the local guides are this sort of broader, scaled, everywhere in the world group that can buttress us and you know, support us. And, and I also want to say we don't have to be worried that, well, these guys aren't experts. Are they going to tell us stuff that's wrong? Is one person going to say this and that? Yes, they will. So we, but the point is we have enough votes. So often we'll have, you know, eight people will say this place is accessible. And one person might say no, but we'll say, okay, on balance with our, with the machine learning and with what the business owner said, we, we can confidently say what's accessible and what's not. So, We'll work together in this, but I'm so happy that we have this expert group here to, to help guide us. And so uh, let, let's talk about some, how about for hearing uh, impaired people and people who are blind? Uh, are there any movements afoot to deal with information for them? Yes. So the first non-mobility uh, disability that we started supporting in MAPS is hearing loops. So the special frequency broadcast that you have, for instance, in movie theaters that transmits to the T-coil in, in people's hearing aids. And so that now, we're starting to get that data uh, submitted. So the local guys and any person can contribute that in Google Maps, but we're also getting big stores of data submitted by HLAA, the Hearing Loop Association of America. And we have something called G-Data Upload that lets people submit you know, hundreds, thousands of, of rows of data at a time. And in addition to uh, hearing impairments, uh, visual for the blind low vision community, we're 
investigating. We're working with Good Maps and Mike May, who was here last time, mm -hmm. uh, and starting to work with what they do and the cognitive impairment world. We, I've been working personally with Alan Day, who I met here, and I was talking yesterday with Becky Large from CAN and getting cognitive impairment features in there absolutely on our agenda, too. That's great. So just the, so um, uh, I want to open it up to questions from the audience, okay? So we have a few, we have five minutes left or something in that range? Seven. Okay. So just the, so I'll, I'll hold off my questions until, so anyone have a question? Yes. And identify yourselves and your organization, please. Good morning. I'm Jennifer Geiger. I'm here from the main office of tourism. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how uh, a DMO can connect with local uh, guides or develop local guides in our destination to provide that information. Like, what steps should we share for our local guides to contribute to the Google Mapping program? So let me understand that question. Okay, so just the, I, I want to just clarify. So you're asking to tap into their local guides, or do you want to create your own? I'm asking what you need. <laughs> I don't know if we have local guides in well, Maine. Well, you probably don't. So just the, uh, so uh, I just wonder, just, so, so tap, is there a way to tap into the local guides in Maine, for example? Yes, there is. And I, I hate to contradict you, Jake, but you probably do have local guides uh, because I'm always surprised when I go to these, my any kid, but when I go to these conferences, as I said, they're from Kyrgyzstan, they're from Nigeria, they're from Sri Lanka, but they're also from Maine and from, you know, Ohio and San Diego. The point is uh, there's a site called Local Guides Connect. Uh, it's a Google site, but it's local guides branded, and it's, it's really a forum. So it's a place where local guides can go in there and ask questions. And you have the sort of pro-level local guides, the moderators, who...
Let's do that. Let's do that.